This is Kurt Grimm with Nutri-Drip Irrigation Systems and we're going to go through the steps to properly winter so winterizing a drip irrigation system. So the first step is to go from the water supply to the filter station and in between there there's going to be a chem valve. The chem valve is this um, galvanized steel with flange connections. There's a check valve in here and so the chem valve is going to trap water between on the on the front side of this check valve and so we need to remove the plug that's on the bottom side of the chem valve so right here there's gonna be a three-quarter inch port I've already drained this one down so there won't be a lot of water here but uh, take out this three-quarter inch port I usually lay it up here on top of the on top of the air vent to kind of hold it there so it's there next spring when you come back to start system up so this is first step is draining down the chem valve it's going to be somewhere between your water supply and your filter station. Okay, next is to drain down the main line after the filters. So filters are inside the container here. Um, this particular field, the filter station is at the lowest point in the field. So the main line goes uphill from here. Um, and so that main line has to be drained down. So on the outside of the container, um, we're going to have either a 2 inch or a 3 inch ball valve. This is where we're going to hook up our air compressor to blow the system out. I'm going to open this valve up. Um, this one I had already drained down again, so, so no water here today. But um, this, is, this is ensuring that the main line is drained down to that point, and now the filters are dry, everything inside the container, um, those pipes in there do not have water in them. If you have a system where there's the, the field slopes away from the filter, then you need to go to the lowest valve in the field and remove the two inch air vent from the main line to allow that main line to drain down to that level and not trap water inside the main line. There's two, acting air, two inch continuous acting air vent. You should just be able to do this with, with by hand. Okay, around the edge of the field, there's going to be ball valves where the submain flushes and flush valves are located at. Um, those need to be cracked open. If the valves were ever shut when there was water flowing out, that ball is going to hold water, and, and those balls have, will freeze and break if they're full of water. So you just want to crack these open um, that allows that ball to, to empty out. Don't open them all the way and leave them open all the way, um, just part way. We've had issues with mice crawling back inside if we leave them open too far. So we just want to crack them open got to make sure they don't hold water inside that ball. So inside the container, um, the things we need to drain are, the, this is called the command filter, and it's always going to be on the top manifold of the filter. So we're basically just going to pop this loose, take it off. Um, there shouldn't be pressure here. I'm just going to dump that out and leave that off. Pressure transducer, so this pressure transducer is orientated in a place where this can drain out now. If these pressure transducers were maybe hanging on a wall and just had a spaghetti tube going to them, then we would need to disconnect them and, uh, and drain those out as well. On a back flush controller, if you have a separate back flush controller, these spaghetti tubes need to be taken off to drain the water out of that um, pressure differential sensor. So just unhook both those, let them hang, and they will drain out. Inside the container then, the other thing to, think, or to look at is your uh, fertilizer injection pump. Okay, on the Ferta-1, there's two things that need to be winterized on the Ferta-1 pumps. Above the, on the discharge side of the Ferta-1, there's a check valve in here and the union needs to be loosened on the top of this check valve so that it doesn't trap the water right in here. If we trap water in here, we'll freeze and break this pipe. The other thing is on the back side of the pump, underneath, there's a plug, and uh, that plug needs to be loosened and removed um, to allow the water to drain out of the, out of the pump itself. I believe it's a metric. 13 wrench or just a pair of pliers will do the trick. So removing that plug, make sure the pump drains out. And then you put it back in? 
lot of times I'll leave these loose in here so they don't get lost. 